fairly relaxed and, and fairly comfortable heading into this matchup. Uh, so we'll see if uh, the the loss that McTastic is coming off of has gotten into his head uh, and is going to impact his play style during the, this best of five series. These guys are obviously friends, as we mentioned before. They live right next to each other. Paladin saying good luck, buddy, and good luck, dude, from McTastic in the top right corner. We've got the Protoss player, Paladin. And in the top left, we have the Red Terran player coming off a hard loss. Let's see how he plays in this series. It is Mechtastic. I mean, in this game, I am pretty sure, as we saw from Mechtastic last game, uh, Entity told us that he said he would never do Mech against Protoss. Hmm. Uh, Entity saying that he knew Mechtastic but wasn't entirely probably the least person of his friends that he's played with, so uh, McTask apparently shared with him that that's how he plays. So I guess we, based on that, would expect to see some more of the bio drop play. But these guys, having played together frequently, I'm sure will be knowing what's coming. If McTastic wants to try to make those mech drops, or I'm sorry, those bio drops work this game, he's really going to have to get those out. It seemed like everyone that he tried to put in uh, that last game uh, against Entity was just getting picked off before it could get out of there. J large losses, not good trades, and uh, you, that's what the whole point of the drops are. Long shot, he does like mech, but appears only versus Zerg. All the games we've casted of Mechtastic versus Zerg, he's a heavy, heavy mech player, but uh, apparently during against Protoss, he favors the bio with the drops. And so far today at this tournament, the Templar Colossus play has been extremely strong against Terran, taking down one after another. Both scouts go to the wrong places, so they are going to be getting a little bit later information than they were anticipating. Mechtastic already in the food lead. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Paladin already in the food lead. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Well, I have to defend myself and say that we are the casters, the production crew. We do everything but organize the matches, which we thank, 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 thank the BSG admin team for organizing the matches for us because that would just be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's explode. They have picked some fantastic players too. We've gotten to see a real treat of, of top tier players uh, in this tournament today and last night. It's been great, and it's all coming to a culmination here as we are playing for the third and uh, the third place will be the loser of this matchup and the winner of the matchup will go on to compete against Entity in the Grand Final. This is a new play out of McTastic. He's decided to go with the early command center. And Paladin was able to scout that when his probe went in, but this SCV of McTastic is not going to get to see a whole heck of a lot. Let's see, check to see. He did see a gateway, Cybercore, and an expansion, so they'll both be pretty pretty safe in their openings knowing that both are expanding but they are in very close positions. Mechtastic drops three more barracks right away. Oh, this is going to be a very aggressive bio play against Protoss. What do you think as far as this being a response to his previous losses? Well it seems like he's going to try something similar to what we saw in game one versus Entity. However Paladin is putting some early pressure on with this Zealot and uh, Stalker, the Mothership core is dragging its large butt over <laughs> to try and assist. Mechtastic getting some nice micro, pulling some SCVs down to try and fend this off. This Stalker is still being a problem. As he put down that command center right away, his production of Marines has been a bit slow, but now that all four barracks are done, he's going to be pumping those out four at a time. But it's still going to be tough as this Stalker and Mothership core here, the Mothership core does have enough energy for a time warp. Does not get the uh, Supply Depot up in time to keep the Stalker out, but does keep the Zealot out. Marines are coming out, but are in the middle of a time warp. He is going to be able to finally hold this off, but at a large cost to him. Taking down a mule as his last dying wish on this Earth, says that Stalker. If you look at the units lost to have, it's actually pretty even, but Protoss definitely has taken the large distraction lead, I would say, as that Spidey mm -hmm. Blitzer is about to burn down as this CD comes to repair it. 
food count's pretty even. Marines being pumped out two at a time now, it seems like. Uh, Mothership Corps being remade by Paladin. Also getting a forge, presumably to uh, get some upgrades. Twilight Council coming up for Paladin as well. Looks like it's going to be either a DT play or a blink play. He's done both of them, so it could be either. Two more Stalkers, two more Zealots coming out, as well as two additional Zealots on top of that, and Mothership Corps headed towards Mectastic. Paladin sniffs that Mectastic might be just trying to get a Marine Force up and trying to exploit that a bit, because these time time warps, next day nine, <laughs> time warps on Marines with a few gateway units can be really nasty, especially with Stalkers, because it just slows those Marines right down. Now we do see a factory going down from Mectastic. I assume that's going to be uh, a necessary hurdle to jump so that he can get starports and medevacs to support these marines. Fantastic! now making a push of marines, which is not going to go very well if he can land this time warp on him. Oh, and he does a zealot to get right up there, trying to use the force field to stop him, but they get out of that time warp and going to take out a lot of marines, though. Those stalkers just do so much damage to marines without the combat shield upgrade. Still microing, able to do some damage to those zealots, but they are taking down marines. Looks like Paladin looked away for a moment as the stalkers were down there idling, but as that mothership core comes back and more stalkers, these marines and one marauder are going to be chased back. During that push, Mechtastic got his factory up, now going for his starport. It's like going to be putting a reactor on the factory, and I'm just going to assume that the factory and starport are going to be switched as he does not favor the factory at all in this matchup. Pylon going down in the back for Paladin, getting his plus one armor. Two more gateways for a total of four, five, sorry. Mectastic taking a little bit of a bioforce, going to see if he can poke a little bit. If Paladin can catch this bioforce on another time warp, it's going to be an easy cleanup. Mectastic does scan to see what Protoss has. Paladin moving his stalkers back, maybe anticipating a scan at the back. Or, sorry, a drop at the back, which there is none. Mectastic does put down a third base. Mectastic going for the big macro play this game. This mm -hmm. is a bit unusual for him so far, at least in the bio style. Starport does begin producing two medevacs. Factory lands and sits idle. Armory going down, plus one attack going down. If we look at the upgrades tab, we see that Mechtask has gotten stim and Protoss has just gotten plus one armor. Both people are getting their upgrades, mm -hmm. but at a little bit slower rate. It's like one Forge for Protoss, one eBay for Terran. Well, now we're seeing Concussive Shells, Combat Shield, and Terran Infantry Weapon 1. All coming down. Scan there by Mechtastic to see what Protoss has got in store for him. He has some Size Force Gauge. That charge is done, so those Zealots are running up and snuggling right next to those Marines. Paladin has a huge food lead at 94 to 62 as Mechtastic's food is just going up a little bit now that he's reinforcing. It's going to be pushed back again. I feel like these constant pushes are being counterproductive for him. It seems like he keeps running into these walls of zealots and uh, force fields that are not treating him well. Now he is going to load up in medevacs and attempt to drop on the back side of the main as Paladin puts down a third base. This is going to be fairly critical for him, in my opinion. If he can't get something done here, he's going to fall way behind. Ghost Academy is about to finish, and Blink is going down from Paladin. Looks like he's going to unload and try to be undetected for as long as possible. Two Marines still in that medevac. Takes on a pylon, supply blocks Paladin, and just lifts up and gets out. He wants to come down here and try and cancel this base so he can stay ahead in the economic. But the army is like down. If he and there are units everywhere. Photon overcharge. Looks like he's going to lose one medevac. Cannon there going to pressure the medevac to force it out, and that's going to be the end of that push. So he was able to kill one pylon. I just don't feel like that was enough. Yeah, again, we were talking about the last game just not making effective trades with those drops. 
unfortunately. But these Protoss players have been very good about positioning their units in a way where those medevacs are just taking hits. There's just not a safe way in or out. Yeah, I think Protoss has gotten the wiser on the speed medevac drops after Heart of the Swarm first came out. It was a real problem, but now everyone has gotten used to it more. As the second drop comes in from Mechtastic at Paladin's Natural, lots of stalkers warped in with that cannon photon overcharge. This is going to be cleaned up easy, easy lemon squeezing. One of the medevacs does fall, a nearly full medevac gets away. Long shot making some comments in the chat saying, Don't attack, please! <laughs> <laughs> Do not attack. Mechtastic just continuing to fall behind. Paladin now over 50 feet ahead with the third base up. Mechtastic has to do something to get an advantage here, and so far it has not been doing these drops. They've just been putting him further and further behind. Units lost tab. Mechtastic is double uh, Paladins, and he's opting now for putting down a fourth and a fifth base at the bottom of the map. This feels like a desperation play. Allegation. It, he needs to do something to try and climb ahead, and if he's it, if he wants to try and do that economically, uh, hiding those bases may prove fruitful. But all it takes is an observer going in one direction. Paladin in the last series he played was the hero coming back against a Terran opponent after he was down by a quite a significant margin, of, uh, and largely because of Psystorm, which is going down now. And the we saw him favor the shield upgrades a lot as that means he's going to be transitioning into a largely zealot archon force as these stalkers die off. Yeah, right now we are seeing that Protoss does have the ground armor level 3 and weapons number 1 and the Terran infantry is at 1-1 one, one currently. It's like Paladin leaving a few zealots behind in his main just in case. Also taking a fourth at the side 3 o'clock expansion. A drop is in the, the natural but that gets cleaned up yet again. Mick Tasker is just going to have to switch up his play here because this is not working out for him. The unit's loss continues to grow as almost 4,000 for Terran as opposed to 1,500 for Protoss. Protoss is just allowing Protoss to use that differential in money to continue powering his army. Mectastic now adding ghosts to his compositions, hoping that that will make a difference. Also adding some Hellbats. 3-1-2 upgrades. Three armor, one shield, and two attack done for Protoss. One one only for Mechtastic, which is going to put him yet at a further differential when it actually comes to an engagement. Storm is done. Dark Shrine is actually finishing up too. Do we have any high temp? And that observer yet? saw yes. some SCVs moving into a funky direction. He's going to investigate. Oh, but he did stop it in the middle. Lots of high Templar for Paladin up here. This has been the Kryptonite of Terran today versus Paladin. Paladin just has Terran's number with these storms, and he's going to be in the middle. Ghosts need to get off an epic EMP, and they don't do it. A few of the Zealots get EMP'd, but not the money units, the Templar in the back that really needed to get that EMP. Going to try and Mech get close enough. knows that he's going to pull back. He's got a ghost, a two ghosts down there, three, four ghosts. Oh, amazing EMPs on those Templar, leaving only two of them with enough energy to storm. Can he get another one off? And sniping a couple of them. Mechtastic makes a huge advantage in negating those storms. Mechtastic is going to... Oh, there's oh. one storm. I think that was the only one that he had available. Now he's going to convert those into Archons, and Mechtastic, I think, is going to be able to pretty easily clean this up, but he's going to pull his SCVs. And he's not feeling super confident with all those force fields. Ghosts are running down, but they are not being controlled. They do get in and snipe off that uh, Archon, and now he's giving chase a little bit, trying to hope hoping to pick off any units that he can as it retreats back to home base, but DTs are moving into the front of DTs Mechtastic's base. DTs took out base. the third base of Mechtastic in that engagement. Uh, Mechtastic did force Paladin back, but Paladin, I think, knows that he's still ahead, having a pretty significant mineral bank. Uh, maybe some Warp Prism Zealots would be a good choice. He does have a remote pylon down here. That's where those DTs came from. Mechtastic now going to try and press after he held off that attack. Paladin still is in a significant lead. Does not have the high Templar count with his army to be able to really get those money storms off on that. 
Fantastic, is he going to go for the third or the natural? Looks like he's going to head towards the natural. Running headlong into this army. Archon's doing damage and ultimately falling. Guardian Archon's shields went up. Archon's doing damage. Mechtastic, GG. Archon's just too much for that army. Good game. And Mechtastic will go, I'm sorry, Paladin will go up 1-0 and in this best of five, so we still have a few more games. That's right. At least two. Mechtastic clearly needing to try and switch up his build a little bit as this bio drop force is just not working out for him, it seems. Against Protoss, at least. Mm -hmm. One of our players previously said that Mechtastic largely favors bio in Protoss matchups, but I wonder if maybe we will either see some, this being a best of five, it leaves it more open to the cheese factor mm. in a game two after a game one from either player. Paladin could easily go for a cheese for a quick second win as well. Yeah, very, very easily could do so. We did see uh, Mechtastic add a few fire bats into that unit composition as those do get healed by the medevacs that he had. I think he was just trying to pull units out from anywhere, uh, but be trying to be creative in doing so as well. So it remains to be seen what we'll see in the next games. I'm sure that uh, Mechtastic has got to be getting really frustrated. And uh, we'll just continue to see how that impacts his play. I, I would not be surprised if we saw something uh, a little bit more cheese-like to try and get himself back in here. This would be a game to do it. Uh, it's not the deciding match. It, he's not up, but he does need to do something drastic in order to get a game up. Obviously, like we said, these players do both know each other very well, so they may know in what situation something like that might come out. But 